Hey folks, Eric the Old Jarhead here. Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you being here. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the basic components of an off-grid solar power system. And I would argue that it's really just an off-grid power system. People often confuse solar power with meaning that you get some solar panels and now you have power. When in reality, one of the components, the main component that is most important for your off-grid power system is or are your batteries or your battery bank. Everything else is just there to either charge up your battery bank, draw power off your battery bank, or monitor it. Really, there's, <laughs> everything is centered on your battery bank. So if you wanna know what the components are for an off-grid power system, they are, number one, your battery bank. That's number one, because you run off the battery. Can you run off the solar panels when the sun's up and bright? Sure, if your batteries are fully charged. But the reality is your power system, your inverter, which is another component, takes the battery power and converts it to 120 volts. It's running off of the batteries, not the solar panels. The batteries are your core component to your off-grid power system. Now you might ask how you determine the size of the battery bank you need. And I'm going to go through that in another video upcoming soon, so look for that coming. But from a component standpoint, batteries are number one. Then a means of charging those batteries. And that folks may be solar panels, but it could be micro hydro. It could be a generator. I know lots of guys that have a quote unquote off-grid power system that have no solar panels. What they have is a generator and they power up the batteries with the generator and the rest of the day they run off the batteries. And if they do it right, and they have a powerful enough charger, so you gotta run a charger off that generator, then they might be able to power up their batteries in three or four hours of running the generator and then run the next 20 or 21 hours on batteries alone. You could have micro hydro. That's basically almost like a, a little turbine in a creek or a river or something of that nature. Maybe you've got a spring uphill from you, you could run a water pipe down, throw a little turbine in there, generate power that charges up your batteries. It could be a wind turbine. So you could have an off-grid power system that you only have wind and maybe micro hydro and a generator to back you up. So component number two really is means of charging the batteries. And that may be solar, it may be wind, it may be a generator or a micro hydro or some combination thereof. Component number three is the inverter. Now you don't have to have an inverter and that's why I made it number three. You do not have to have an inverter if you're only running 12 volt items. You can get 12 volt stuff just like an RV. So you might have a 12 volt fridge and a 12 volt freezer and a 12 volt stereo and 12 volt lights and you don't need 120 volts for anything. But if you need 120 volts here in North America, 120 is what we use. A lot of people say 110, but it's actually 120 folks. But you need an inverter to take the battery bank power, which could be 12 or 24 or 48 volts and convert it to 120 volts AC. Battery banks are DC voltage, direct current. 120 volts is AC alternating current. So that's what your inverter does. And there are two types of inverters. There are modified sine wave and pure sine wave. Many argue that modified sine wave is really square wave, but in essence, it's not as clean as what we know of as pure sine wave, which is a clean 120 volt, 60 Hertz, alternating current type of electricity. It's best for any modern appliances, really. So that's number three. So we have batteries, a means of charging the batteries, that's your solar panels, your generators, your micro hydros, your turbines, whatever. Then you got your inverter. And then finally, you do need breakers. Now I notice a lot of people are looking to fuse things today. I'm not a fan of fusing. I like combiner boxes. Combiner boxes can take your panels. Now I am told as a little caveat here, if you run more panels in series than I do, you should fuse them. Some argue if you run any panels in series, you should fuse the panels. So if one panel has a fault or something, it will kick out the other one. You won't damage both panels. But all of my panels run into a combiner box. And the combiner box allows me to put a breaker on each series set of panels. So these panels here, three in series, there's a combiner box over there. Those panels, which are two series, three parallel, are on another combiner box over there. And each of those combiner boxes has a breaker in it that is appropriate for the power coming out of those panels. So 
breaker box. You also need a disconnect, main disconnect, between your batteries and your inverter. And that is where you would also put breakers for your charge controller. So if you have, whether it's wind, whether it's solar, whatever, you're gonna have a charge controller that takes that power coming in from that source, say it's solar. So it would take that solar power, which is variable. Sometimes it may be only putting out 40 or 50 volts, sometimes 60 or 70 volts. It all depends on how direct the sunlight is. So that needs to go to a charge controller that will take that power that's coming in and clean it up essentially, if you think of it that way. If you're running a 24 volt battery bank like I am, and you've got 60 volts coming in from your solar panels, you need something to take that 60 volts and step it down to the appropriate charging level for that 24 volt battery bank. In my case, with LifePo 4 batteries, that are 24 volts, I need 29.1 or 29.2 volts coming into the batteries. Not only does the charge controller do that, but it also has a smart charging type system where it'll have higher voltage coming in for the bulk charge, then it will drop that voltage down a little bit, step it down for the absorption charge, and then it will do it again for float. Okay, I've got to make a correction here. It's something that I catch myself on all the time. The way the typical ramp works on a charge controller or even any of the new smart chargers is that the ramp starts at a specific voltage and it works up to the bulk slash absorption voltage itself. So it doesn't actually ramp the voltage down when it goes into absorption. Like I said here, it actually goes up to whatever point that you wanna set it to. So if you're doing a flooded lead acid battery, something like that, then it might go up to 28.5 or 28 volts or whatever. And then it'll hold it there during the rest of bulk as well as absorption. Then it drops. Just a quick clarification for you. Let's continue. And a lot of charge controllers are designed for lead acid batteries that may need to be equalized and so they'll also have an equalization setting. Beyond that folks the only other components that you might have would be some sort of monitoring system. I happen to like the Bogart Engineering's trimetric monitor that works really well. It gives me voltage, it gives me my state of charge, it can tell me how many amps are coming in or going out so it's a really nice system but beyond that you really that's your components. Batteries, a means of charging the batteries, a means of converting the battery power to 120 volt for things that you need that on, and then breakers, combiner panels, disconnects, and maybe some monitoring stuff. That's it, folks. That's all there is to a solar power system. So remember, next time you're thinking about maybe I'm gonna build a solar power system, don't go look at solar panels first. Find your batteries that are gonna meet your needs and then build everything off of that. I decided we gotta go buy dot dogs before we head home. So we're gonna do that. Check it out. We hope you wore your fat pants. <laughs> Unattended children will be given an energy drink and taught to swear. <laughs> Practice safe lunch, use a condiment. You know, all of those Facebook posts kept some of us who live a little further away drooling all winter long. <laughs> right. Oh, well, actually, uh, I was here with our Jeep Club last September. I remember. Yeah. So we, we, I, I dragged them all out here, but uh, those were good. So anyway, I told my wife, I said, all right, damn it, we're leaving. It's Sunday. We're going to have to go buy nachos. Awesome. <laughs> so now we're going to get something. Perfect. You milk chicken? Yeah. Two 12 ounce. Let's do that. What's in the what's in the what shake and bacon one? Um, so it has a spiced um, maple syrup, but we put real bacon pieces in it, and it's got it's some some uh, maple drizzle and whipped cream, and we put real bacon on top as well. So it's bacon oh, and uh, maple. Ah, that's what Robert had. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna do that one. I might do the salted caramel or. Well, I suggest if she's getting salted caramel, you get two different kinds. Right, then, that's you know, true. Well, there's a butterscotch. What about the butterscotch? She doesn't look like she wants to share, though. Well, you can get the mint madness and then. Okay, I'll do the mint madness. So it's all right. Mint madness. Salted caramel. Caramel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We could share them. There we go. Okay. And you're, you, you guys have, do you guys have a website? Um, I, just, I have Facebook. 
just Facebook. Not, okay. Yeah, I don't have time for a website. But Brown chicken, brown cow. If something here offends you, please let us know. We can all use a good laugh. <laughs> My sense of humor might hurt your feelings. Good. Well, folks, there you have it. Not Doug's, not sponsored by Not Doug's. Not Doug's didn't buy our milkshakes, but you know what? They're awesome. If you ever get into the Aeneas Valley area of North Central Washington, uh, just outside of the Okanagan, it's absolutely worth a stop, folks. Whew. Gotta come here for lunch one day. We will soon. And the view? The view's pretty nice too. Well, folks, I gotta hit the road, so I'm gonna let you go. But thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.